Thank you for turning to 10. From NBC 10 News and the American Democracy Project, welcome to a Decision 2022 debate. The race for Rhode Island governor. Live from Rhode Island College in Providence. Here is NBC 10's Gene Valicenti. And welcome to all of you. Well, here we are, the last debate before the election next week. We want to welcome you in and thank our host, Rhode Island College. Also want to thank our candidates for showing up. Number one, Republican Ashley Kalis. She is the Republican candidate. Welcome to you. Our incumbent, Governor Dan McKee, the Democrat, is here with us. We're dispensing with opening statements. We will have closing statements of one, one minute each. We'll mix it up. Uh, this is not an interview. This is not a, uh, a series of questions. This is a debate. I will throw a ball up in the air. It's a jump ball, to use the parlance you're comfortable with. Or perhaps we'll touch gloves and then go at it. I'm here to set the table. <laughs> I'm not running. You two are. So go for the ball. Let's touch gloves and go it. Now, first question or first uh, topic. Governor McKee, today you described Ashley Kalis as threatening, demeaning, hateful. Some of your surrogates, who I've heard in, in uh, broadcast media, have suggested she's a liar and evil. Ashley, on your part, you have called the governor clueless, corrupt, a misogynist, no plan Dan, a liar, and incompetent in general. First question for you, Ashley, do you stand by all of those remarks or do you want to walk anything back? I know politics is nasty, but the both of you have certainly raised the bar. Go ahead. The remarks about the governor? Yeah. I mean, he The names you've called him. Well, he traps children in failing schools. He is under FBI investigation for a contract that was supposed to be for COVID learning loss for children that he uh, gave to insiders and his friends. He's given out corporate welfare uh, to the soccer stadium, which is $60 million for a minor league soccer team that doesn't even have a team to play in it, and has bailed out a corporate developer for the Superman building. He has given $3,000 uh, bonuses to buy votes and $60,000 raise is for two insiders. Right. And this is, that happened in the same week that he allowed there to be an electricity rate hike of 47%, which hurts seniors and working people. We'll get to all of that. You'll be, have time to flesh that up. My initial question was, do you take anything back the names you've called the governor? Incompetent, competent, clueless, corrupt, misogynist, no plan, Dan, liar. I'll take it the answer is no. You stand by all of that? Based on what I just said, I think that's a good summary. Okay, I understand that. Governor, how about you? Uh, threatening, uh, demeaning, hateful, disturbing, uh, and some of your surrogates, evil and a liar. Do you stand by all of that? Yes, yeah, so I'm describing the behavior, and I think it is despicable behavior, what we've read in the, uh, in the newspapers and the text over the last uh, several days. Um, the, uh, and uh, directly to the issue of why I think that, uh, that uh, Ms. Kalis has run a dishonest campaign, a shameful one, and she's wrong for Rhode Island. When she talks about, again, she said that I'm under investigation uh, by the FBI, which is not true, uh, but yet, and our own attorney general has said that her approach and her advertising is unfair. And unfair if you well, go, he if you go to- back today, I'm sorry. In a statement, he said that you were under, um, you were in state uh, and federal investigation. And he is the state attorney general. What I'm talking about is a federal investigation. All right, let the governor finish. Yes. No jump ball, but let him finish. And okay. then we'll, we'll pick it up again. Yeah, so the attorney general has called her unfair the way that she's approached the, uh, the accusations. And unfair is dishonest, it's shameful, and wrong. Okay. And, and yes, I do believe that Ms. Kalis is wrong uh, for the state of Rhode Island. Uh, her positions, whether it has to do with women's right to choose, or gun issues, or development issues, uh, yes, she's wrong for Rhode Island, and, and I, her, I think her behavior is despicable. Okay, let the record show both of you stand by everything you've said. You're not walking it back. Uh, uh, candidate Kalish, just a day ago, you're making news. In fact, the New York Post picked up the story for text yes. you sent to a uh, contractor you were fighting with in Chicago. Pretty strong language. Yes. And I've heard that before. We're not clutching our pearls here. You're wearing <laughs> pearls tonight. I don't yes. see you clutching not, them. No. But there is one issue where you use the phrase bottom, and some people are seeing that as a, as a homosexual slur. Do you want to address that? No. That's not true. Listen, this was a CD Chicago contractor. The contractor defrauded me, my family, and made inappropriate uh, statements to women in my practice. And you should have seen what he said to me. I will not be taken advantage of. And in business, sometimes you need to fight. I, unlike the governor, when I'm governor, the taxpayers will not be taken advantage of. 
Dan McKee has taken advantage of the taxpayers in his actions, in his policy, in his giving out contracts to his golf buddies, in giving out corporate welfare to private developers instead of uh, taking care of the people Could of Rhode Island. Could you just address my question about the term bottom? What did you mean yeah, by I, that? I, you know, I, what I've said is there was some language back and forth, and the guy is, you know, not a seedy guy, not a good guy. Okay. That is what I meant. All right, Governor, you took exception to that. You mentioned that in your press release. Go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a patent here, right? Well, there's an Illinois with police reports, uh, whether it's uh, with uh, disruptions in terms of interaction with uh, people that uh, do work for uh, Ms. Kalis, uh, and then head into Florida with fines down there because of zoning issues and coming up to Rhode Island and have another police report in Westley when, uh, remember, the reason that Ms. Kalis came to the state of Rhode Island right. was a lucrative COVID contract. And when, for millions of dollars, she paid herself hundreds of thousands of dollars during that time frame. She mismanaged the contract and that was not renewed. When she mismanaged the contract the and it was pattern, not renewed. The only pattern, I'm sorry, is him personally attacking me. Personally attacking me. Hold on, I, 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 he personally attacks me instead of running on his record. I am here. I am here to have a conversation about policy, about things that he's done in his office. So I understand um, that the pattern here is a governor that is incompetent, a governor that cannot release the RICAS scores because he's afraid of the political consequences, a governor that cannot ensure that children get uh, to school because he cannot ensure that the buses get there. Yeah, this is a you, pattern of incompetence right. that hurts people, hurts so Rhode Islanders. All, but instead let, of so, talking... All right, yeah. let me finish my statement, okay? Yes, so when the contract was removed because she mismanaged the contract, she decided to register to vote in the state of Rhode Island and run for governor. That is not a good motivation. The motivation to run for governor is to do good things for the people who live in the state of Rhode Island. And over the last 20 months, and over the last, and so, uh, over the last 20 months, we've done exactly that. So we've taken us from the Ashley worst just, vaccinated state to the very best. We're a lot healthier today because of the work that we were able to do in my administration. And the people who work with me get that done. We are also running the lowest unemployment rate this summer in the history of the state of Rhode Island. And there's still good paying jobs available. In addition to that, the largest surplus in the history of the state of Rhode Island. And we're applying that to investments in the future for the people in the state of Rhode Island. And also, which I think is really important, Gene, yeah. we are the, f the fastest recovering economy in the Northeast, second in the country. Rhode Island no longer has to be that state who's first in and last out of economic downturns. We're proving that right now and over the last 20 months, with my administration, right. we have reversed that entire issue in terms For of- both candidates. All right. Audience, we, we don't have to applaud everyone. We're allowing an audience involved, but just let's be a little reasonable. Governor, we've got plenty of time to flesh out all the talking points. Same hey. thing for you, candidate Kayla, so don't feel like you need to get everything in. But, Governor, the initial question was, uh, you called her demeaning and threatening and hateful. Over what? Curse words? I've been cursed out by politicians. You know what goes on behind those state house doors. So what is it? Are you clutching your pearls? No, and I've already answered that, Gene, in terms of the way that, you know, her patent, in terms of the way that she's been involved with, with, uh, with certain confrontations, with, with people over her career that we know of, because well, what do we know about Ms. Kalis? Not very much. And I've told you, the behavior is, is despicable. Right. And when I'm in, when I'm in my office, uh, I think that uh, my family's in with me. I think that my kids are there with me, I, before I choose my words. I think that my dad is there with me with his chair that I still carry around with me. Yes, I think how you conduct yourself in a respectful way with the people that you work with and the people that work with you is really important. And I do believe what we've seen is despicable behavior. Okay, uh, so candidate yeah. Kalis, uh, he, he, he is laying you out for what he sees as a pattern. Right. Uh, we saw the allegations that you kicked a right. pregnant woman. You deny that. Right. I know you're gonna say that right. you deny that. There's a police report, you say it's false. Uh, now the text right. and other incidents along the way. Address that. I, so what you I- You have the temperament what, he's trying what, to say. Right, well that's, that's what somebody does. That's a career politician thing to do. When you can't run on your record, you try to personally attack your opponent. If you have no vision for the state or no plan, Dan, you'll go into personal attacks. What I can say is that he's the sort of leader that can't even have joint credit. So we work together on vaccination and you renewed my contract three times. And I think together we should celebrate that success. Now in terms of the other items, his record, the reality is this is a, a governor 
that his actions show that he is trapping children in failing schools. And not only that, if he felt that um, things were better, he could have released the RICAST scores. He did not do that. And so that shows a level of political calculation that hurts children. I have heard from so many teachers that say that they cannot modify their curriculum because the scores are delayed. I've heard from parents that are waiting to uh, create an IEP that says this is hurting their child. So what Dan is doing is through his policy, he's hurting individuals. And he, he's not the sort of leader that uh, is good with joint ideas. I gave him the uh, idea for the electricity Would rate Would you rollback. hold that? I'm going to get to the electricity. I'll give okay. you a specific time. Uh, Governor, today uh, they're suggesting that you bristle. That's some tough questions from the Boston Globe. And you said beginning here you're not under investigation. You personally, but is your administration under investigation? How would you like me to frame what's going on with the ILO? And I'll mm. give you the floor. The, what should we call it? There's a review going on. The question is... By, the, F by the FBI. <laughs> I've been asked the question whether I have been involved in that review, and I haven't. And that's all the taxpayers need to know and the voters need to know, is the fact that I am not being... Uh, so, uh, I've, I've given you a warning, there will be no heckling, you'll be asked to leave. That's the, that's the last time I'll say that. The next so heckler I, will be asked to leave. So I know what I've done and what I haven't done. And I've, every, every decision I've made has been in the best interest of the state of Rhode Island. And in terms of record, let's talk about the record over the last 20 Before months. Before we do that, could you just narrow this? You say you're not under investigation. Your administration is by the FBI. Is All I know is what, what I've read, right? So go to the people who are doing the review, Gene. If you want to get answers from them, all I can tell you is that right now, I've done everything in the best interest of the state of Rhode Island. And I, I do go along with the, what, the, uh, what the Attorney General says. The accusations that are coming on that direction from Ms. Kalis are unfair, they're dishonest, they're shameful, and they're wrong. The, the Attorney the, General yeah. has, has indicated not to make hay, that if you do that, you're being unfair to him. Actually. So the FBI doesn't come in to review, they come in to investigate. And if Dan has nothing to hide, he should simply release the subpoenas. You can release the subpoenas and you failed to do so. You refused to do so. So if you trust the people of Rhode Island, which I do, I trust their judgment, release the subpoenas. Will you do that? Answer? The answer is I've already answered the question. If you want to get more information on the review, go to the people who are doing the review. I am telling you right now that I've, every decision I've made has been in the best interest of the state of Rhode Island. And let's talk about what I've done on education. We will. We'll give you and, time And the for reason that. why why we procured that agree, that contract. And by the way, we did not uh, do anything that did uh, did not follow protocols. Uh, that was done uh, well, exactly the way that it's spelled out. So there's nothing there that they're going to see that's going to see me involved with anything that other than what's in the best interest of the people of the state of Rhode Island. And let's talk about what we did, why we well, did that, Gene. Well, you it's could important. just release the subpoena, it's important. it's important why we did that. And what we're hearing is we know. Not only did we have to get vaccinations, open up the economy, we had to open up our schools safely. And that's exactly what I did during the first week of 30 days in office. Made sure that our schools would open up safely. We vaccinated every, every teacher that wanted the vaccination. That wasn't done. Right. We made sure the schools were safe for these kids to go back to school. But it still was virtual. And we know that there's a learning recovery in the state of Rhode Island that is going to need to be tackled. That's what we're doing when we start talking about doing the work okay. both in the schools and outside the school day. Governor, and I, that's what the purpose of that I, I, issue I know that Any, Anybody who says any differently is being dishonest okay, and shameful I've got and to nail this down, Governor. It wouldn't be fair to the audience. You personally say you're not under investigation, but your administration is by the FBI. That appears to be a fact. Are you disputing that? That's what I'm, that's what I'm being told. But okay, the fact of the right. matter is, th okay. as far as what I am doing, that's what's important to the voters. That's what's important in no. this election. And the fact of the matter is that I am not, uh, I have not been contacted. I will not be contacted in any way that in that makes me in a situation where I am going to have done anything other than what's in the best interest of the people okay, in the By the way, I have a bell here. I didn't ding it for you. It's here. Uh -huh. Bell also has its own Twitter account. Uh, so I understand. He is, so, he is under, so his administration is under investigation by the FBI. He believes he's done, done nothing wrong. So what I would say is before the election, please just release the subpoenas. The target of an investigation is usually the last to know 
one that's often not interviewed. So I think that it is in the public interest that you release the information. Okay. Be asked, honest, transparent. Asked, asked and answered. Let's move on to education. Governor, you really are running the Providence schools de facto as the governor with the state takeover. And uh, some people are calling for the RICAS scores to be released. Governor, have you spoken to your education commissioner today? Do you have any scores? Do you have any news for us on that front? Yeah, so I had I got I got a brief yesterday by the uh, the commissioner and, and Ride, and uh, they are getting prepared to release the the RICAS scores. But again, they're going to do it on their schedule when the when the when the scores are ready. So we know what's going to happen, and, and it was confirmed yesterday. Our scores on our reading are going to go slightly down. Our scores on the math are going to go up. So we know that there's a recovery here that we need to make sure to take advantage, you know, to, to work on, and that's what we're doing. Vaccinating the teachers, put over three hundred million dollars in for new schools on, on the bond. We are put $66 million to ensure school students do not experience funding cuts. That was out of the budget that I passed to make sure that we're investing in our schools. And we, we made the Rhode Island Promise a, a permanent fixture. This is the record. This is the record. Governor, and did you see the RICAS scores? Have they I, I, they I have been briefed on what they're going to be. Give me the numbers. Be. What are they? Tell us. Make I, some news. I just, I just told you that the reading scores are going to go down. <laughs> Go ahead. I just told you, the reading scores, what I've been briefed on, the reading scores are going down slightly. And slightly the math, down on reading. And the math scores I mean, are going to go up. Math goes up? Right. Oh, you're making news here. Reading is slightly down. Reading is slightly down, math goes up, and that right now we're, we're, we're right in the same range as Massachusetts so, in terms of the, the recovery uh, that we no, need hold, to get a, a Candidate Kalis, he just said math is going yeah. up. That's a surprise to so me. What, we all expected reading to go down. Are you going to compliment him for that or criticize him for math scores no, going what up? I, what I will say, here's what I will say based on his record. The first debate that we were in, he looked into the camera and told the people of Rhode Island, parents, that uh, the vendor had not delivered the scores. And then uh, later that week, we found out that that was not true. So the governor does not have a good record of being forthright. So what I would say is if you have the information, officially release it. And the other thing that I would like to point out is the fact that the last time the scores were delayed, the only other time was right. during an election year for governor. And that was with Gina, but that was the first year, so I'm going to give her a bye. Holding RICAS scores hostage because of, for political reasons is not acceptable. And I understand that the governor often bows to pressure, which maybe, maybe that's what it is, but we have delayed the release for weeks at a time now, which hurts that's individual true. children, it hurts teachers, and it is frankly unacceptable. When I'm governor, the scores will be released September 30th, and if the current vendor can't do it, I will find somebody that can. Okay. Governor, are you, when are you releasing yeah, so let's Yeah, let's, so let's, um... We're spending a lot of, you know, we're certainly spending a lot of time on this. Hold on. The effort was made for well after a week and a half after that right. uh, that debate uh, to show that somehow I wasn't being honest with the people in the state of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the scores then. I said I didn't have the scores. What I said was, when the commissioner has the uh, information and it's ready, it'll go out. Not before, not after. When might that be? Now that you've been briefed and you have an idea, is that going to be this week or what's left? I, I think week? it's imminent. Before the election. I, I would expect that it is, but, I, but again, that's the call of the commissioner. I've been, I, I, I'm okay. telling you what information I have, Gene, right now. We've been briefed. Reading's going to go down slightly. Math is going to go up. And uh, we are well positioned to do exactly what I've been saying publicly. We will meet or exceed Massachusetts uh, outcomes in their schools by, by on or before 23. Okay. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Uh, Governor, I can't press you further for a number tonight or a ballpark range. I don't think I'd be doing my job if I didn't press you a little bit for that. You've seen them. Yeah, I think it's a couple points on the reading and, and several okay. points right. on the math. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we're at a college, and uh, they want to know about free tuition at Rhode Island College because we've got it over at CCRI, the community college, and that's hurt enrollment here. Do, you, do both of you favor free tuition of some sort? certain years for a place like this or a place like URI, Candidate Kalis? You know, I uh, favor incentivizing and supporting public education, which means higher education as well. So I support programs like dual enrollment programs. I benefited from that as a high schooler. I was able to complete a lot of college during high school and that reduced the overall cost of college. So I support that. Uh, I also support making it uh, easier to borrow and less expensive and incentivizing the choice of public universities as a state to do that. Governor? 
Yeah, the higher ed is very important to us, and that's why we're investing, asking the people to vote for a bond at URI for the Bay Campus, $100 million. I put about $35, $40 million of surplus money there. We're going to invest in our schools. We're going to invest right. in Rhode Island College as well uh, and, and CCRI. Uh, I believe that by me um, making the college promise right. permanent, and I, and I signed that, that legislation uh, a year ago, uh, is very important. And we're, at Rhode Island College, we're, we're rethinking what Rhode Island College is going to be. Uh, we, we're working at, regularly with Shannon Gilkey. Yeah. We're looking at a HOPE scholarship that, is, uh, that hopefully we'll be able to put in place uh, that will help our right. Rhode Island you College know, students. You know. and, I, and, and that's a real thing. So the HOPE scholarship is something that we're going right. to invest in. And we're going to make sure that uh, the, uh, the cost at Rhode Island College is controlled and, and, and affordable. Okay, the students here uh, have submitted a specific question on that. They did a pretty good job. Let me read it specifically, because they're looking for a commitment. Can you commit on this stage to working in earnest with the General Assembly to pass the HOPE Scholarship to give the college students here the same opportunity as CCRI to attend college for two years tuition free? Sounds like they want a yes or no answer, Governor. Yeah, I just said, I mean, before you asked the question, we're working on the HOPE Scholarship. Well, working is, you know, they want something a little harder than that. Is it, are, you, are you yes or no? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to commit to full. I'm, what I'm saying is that the HOPE Scholarship. They want two years. The HOPE Scholarship is going to help the uh, juniors and seniors at the uh, okay. Rhode Island College. So you're t I think you're telling them, sit tight, could be yep. coming. Uh, Ashley? I'm going to work on it, it as well. I'd like to do it. I mm -hmm. have to work with others in order to get it done. But I can say that I understand the need to uh, lower the cost of college education. I made choices in my life and in my career due to student debt. And some of my friends didn't have student debt and they were able to do anything that they wanted without, without thinking about what that meant for them in terms of their student loans. So I want to provide that same equality of choices. And if we do not make education affordable, um, we really are not providing a level playing field. Okay, we're moving to housing, affordable housing. Governor, you had a news release on that today. You also have a plan on affordable housing. Uh, Governor, what is affordable housing? What are we talking about? Uh, housing for the seniors, housing for someone at a certain income level, housing for the homeless, or all of it? What is it? It's all. It's from homelessness to transitioning into housing uh, to fair market value. Uh, we need to make sure that we're investing in housing. I did just that, and the General Assembly approved a $250 million historic investment in affordable housing uh, that can be applied to those categories between homelessness and workforce housing. Uh, we're working on a plan right here at Rhode Island College to transition, to transition uh, teachers and nurses into housing on campus as they graduate so that they actually can afford to uh, work in, the, in, our, in our communities in our state. So housing is critical, yes, $166 million uh, today was announced that is going to be put in and leveraged into housing throughout the state of Rhode Island. Not only that, but Gene, we, we put in $85 million, $85 million for, to, to develop 825 units months ago, and those are already in place. And that's going to happen, and that housing is going to happen in 17 different communities in the state of Rhode Island. We also put in a, a, a funding stream that is going to be an annual funding stream in the budget uh, that is going to provide uh, millions of dollars every single year going forward uh, to address affordable housing as well as uh, the workforce housing in the state. No one's done more, right. quite frankly, than we have on this issue. We have a secretary of housing in place right now who is tasked with that bringing up, uh, you know, making sure that we execute this stuff. And the good news here is the federal dollars that we appropriated actually have to be spent within a, within a three-year time frame. So this is going to be happening. It's going to be very active, and, and we're ready to okay. move on the issue. By the way, you have timekeepers in the back keeping time. We want to make sure that everybody is balanced out. Okay. Uh, a candidate, Kalis, he says he's executing, he's spending tens of millions of dollars. Do yeah. you take exception to that? Will you do more? Where do you stand? Well, we're different. He talks a lot about spending money. But I ask for a return on investment, results. So whenever I will invest the taxpayer's dollars, I will ask things like, how many units are we getting and when? We have a crisis in housing, and this crisis did not happen overnight. It has been over a decade where we failed to build housing across the stock. And right now, we are short more than 20,000 housing units, and we need over 30,000. So the way that you get things done is you have goals. So I have committed uh, to building 10,000 units a year so that we have 80,000 units at the end of my second 
term. The way that we need to get there immediately is we need to uh, take single family dwellings and, and convert them to multifamily units and cities and towns will support that and we should financially incentivize that and also uh, encourage accessory dwelling units for seniors as well. The other thing we can uh, do is we can make sure that we take advantage of federal money matches for affordable housing. Right now we don't do that and that makes us uncompetitive. So we need to match federal dollars with state dollars in order to incentivize developers. The other problem, which is one that got us into this situation, is that we need to make our regulatory and zoning environment less complicated. We cannot have a developer come in and take a number of years to do a project and then start building because that means we're pushing out developing housing stock for years. So what you will get in me is somebody who has goals, who has standards and metrics, and will get things done. Link to this. Uh, link to this is the that large problem of homeless, uh, homeless people yes. in, in Rhode Island. There's a homeless shed up at the State House. Uh, Governor, I'm going to ask you, should that shed be taken away? Is the State House now a platform from any protest? What if, what if the truckers want to put an 18-wheeler in there and leave it there as a form of protest. But we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, there's, there's talk of putting these homeless sheds up, and the Mayor Hopkins in Cranston says he doesn't believe uh, the governor when he says he's not going to put up a village of 400 of them at the Pastore complex. Would you commit to keeping those sheds or anything to do with the homeless out of Cranston? Cranston has enough, he says. We have everything here. It's not someone else's turn. So people are cold and they're sleeping in the cold. And the distrust from the mayor comes from probably the fact that it's election season and people don't trust what he's saying. I was at a homeless um, march rally, and this was a number of weeks ago, where there was a, a request to ensure that there was immediate shelter, especially as we went into winter. There has been no action. What happened last year, and this is an example of his failure of leadership, with the Nilo Hotel, what happened was there was a need immediately and then the relationship with the community and the way in which it occurred made it so that that was no longer a viable option for shelter. Mm -hmm. And the governor had a year, he knew this was coming, but instead of building relationships with the community, ensuring there was wraparound services in a suitable place, he delayed and he does not get involved until there is an emergency. And the problem is that somebody could get hurt. And if you, if you do not have community input from the beginning so that there's a plan, then there is going to be objections from communities. What I will say as governor is that I will ask our cities and towns to remember that our homeless are our mothers, our fathers, our mm -hmm. sisters, our brothers, our grandparents. And there is a measure of compassion. And what you will get with me as a governor is somebody that will ensure there are wraparound services, ensure the community needs are met, and then I would ask the community Community, each community to do their share and help. Cranston wants to make sure you say no, not here, not at the Pastore, we have enough. And the folks at the Pontiac Village section where the Nilo is, they also say we've had well, enough. So is your answer my, specifically to those two? My answer is I am sorry the governor has failed to include you in the process and made this a process of one that is not of compassion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> governor. Uh, Governor, okay. Gene, let's, uh, let's go, go ahead, Governor. Let, you can talk. No, let's let's follow up on this. First, okay? I'll let you. Let's, speak. No, let's follow up on this, please. Well, I'm going to let you do that, Governor. But just address Mayor Hopkins and Chris. Were, he doesn't believe you. We when you did. Say you're not putting the sheds I call, in. Call, I was talking. I, I was communicating with Mayor Hopkins today. So, and we communicated with Mayor Hopkins prior to this ever becoming public. So we have included the mayors. I'm a mayor. We've included mayors throughout and, and municipal leaders. We have weekly meetings with them and sharing this information, all this information that, that we're talking about tonight. So the fact of the matter is that we are moving. And, and, and take a look at the last 20 months. I'm not worried about what happened before I was governor. Let's take a look at the last 20 months. We have announced and we're in construction for 825 units that we announced in April or so. Right. Those are real units. 800 of those are in the affordable category, right? We have been meeting with the Amos House, with Crossroads, with the Rhode Island Foundation on the issue of homelessness. And we are given a number to get up 350 new beds by Thanksgiving. We will meet that level. And we've already met over 250 of those. So we, we, will, we will continue to do the work. 
And if Ms. Kalis doesn't recognize the work, that we have the lowest unemployment rate in this history of state of Rhode Island, that we have a, the fastest recovering economy in the Northeast, and that we, are, that we put $250 million in the budget that was approved and I signed at the, on the last day of yeah. June, and we are actively on that. The train has left on this issue, and, and she hasn't caught up to it yet. Um, okay. I'd like to respond. One minute. I will. I will. Uh, uh, well, just a footnote question. I mentioned the shed was put up at the state house. Uh, Governor, is the state house now a platform for anyone's protest? For example, the truckers are angry at you. What if they rolled the truck and left it there? We understand certain issues, but what, what do you have to say about that? Because you let the tent stay up there during the last protest for weeks. We did, and and we were and we put five million dollars last year towards helping making sure that people had. Uh, you know, shelter during last winter, which has never been done by a governor in the history of the state of Rhode Island, by the way. And then we put $36 million in the budget this year to help with homelessness. We are being very proactive. The issues, that, and I have met the individuals that have the tents outside the state house. I have talked to them. We have provided them with uh, information that's going to get them into shelter if they choose to go into shelter. So I, I'm not afraid of, of the demonstration by people who are reasonable about the way they demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And they are. They are being, we're, we're meeting with them. I have my okay. staff meeting with them. And the interaction is real. And the fact of the matter is, again, we have $250 million in this budget. We are going to spend that on a fast track to deal with uh, housing in the state of Rhode Island. And we're already in motion. Okay. And Ms. Kalis just doesn't want to recognize that. Uh, Ashley, respond. I, yeah. So I'm a person that likes to work in facts. So what I see is that he's providing 600 places, but I was told by a homeless advocate that we need 1,200. So that's 600 short, and we're talking about going into November, and it's cold in November. And so that is still short, and he did not answer the question uh, related to what he intends to do, because he doesn't want the political consequence. What he did do is he did not involve the community last year. We knew this was going to be a problem, and the long-term investments in housing I support. But we need to ensure that we shelter individuals and take care of them. And 600, you know, bed right. short is 600 people. And there is no plan, and there will be no plan until after the election. And this is the sort of leader that he is. Really? I will always be honest, <laughs> as governor. This is the um, this as, is the dishonesty as, that I'm talking about. Let me finish. Mm. As governor, um, I will be honest and I will be transparent, yeah. and I will ask the cities and towns to help me figure out the best okay. place to deal, yes. to deal with this we, issue. And I believe in working with cities and towns in a collaborative way in advance, I, we can take care again, of this problem. Again, I'm talking to the providers that are delivering the service, Amos House, Crossroads, Rhode Island Foundation, on a regular basis. I have a, a staff members working with the Secretary of Housing right out of my office right. on a daily basis, and I get daily updates on the issue. And, I, and the notion that somehow this is, this is, how, this is this not is, a front this is and center issue, different. this is the this dishonesty is that I'm talking about from Ms. Kalis, uh, and she just will not recognize the work. High, best vaccinated state, this, lowest this is, unemployment oh, rate in the history he, of the state of Rhode Island, he, best he, re economic recovery, right. and the largest investment ever made to uh, tackle the issue of housing in the state of Rhode Island. I was, the, as okay. a mayor, by the way, too, I'm organizing, and all the mayors are meeting me as well. They're going to, every community is going to take a piece of the plan. And also, I was a mayor with Peter Bouchard today from Valley Affordable Housing, and he recognized the fact that as a mayor, I had the first approved state planning affordable housing plan in the history of the state of Rhode Island. And, and, and Peter acknowledged that today, where we converted an entire mill village uh, in, in, the, in the town of Cumberland uh, to over almost 100 affordable housing units. Governor, so I've got to don't, I've got I don't need to be lectured about okay. this issue when I have the background uh, and I understand what's going on. Hold on. Uh, Ashley, we're going to... Uh, yeah, you you well, both I have ample time this. to address this. Let me ask a larger philosophical question bringing this in. We've talked about affordable housing for the yes. needy. We've talked about shelter for the homeless. What we often don't talk about is what are you doing for people who pay the taxes and drive up Route 95 every day uh, yeah. and don't get the handouts yeah. and don't get any special attention? What are you doing for the guy so who pays the bills? Thank you for um, bringing up my economic plan. You can look at my website to learn more. What I have suggested is that we need to reduce income taxes for those that make $150,000 or less. And if you make $50,000 or less, you will pay nothing. That protects 
working people. It adjusts for inflation because times are hard and things are not affordable. And when I hear, when I hear Dan say things like everything is great, the economy's great, we have momentum, we have momentum like that Titanic and families are suffering and I know what it is like. I, I know what it is like when the bills are so high you don't even bother opening them because you can't pay them anyway. And with me you will get someone who provides immediate relief because things are not okay. And I have provided a plan for immediate relief. The other thing that I provided, uh, which could have provided immediate relief, and what will happen day one when I am governor, is I will roll back the electricity rate hike, which is hurting seniors, which is hurting working people, and can be immediately done. The governor, the same, hold on, hold on. The let's governor, talk same about, question, same let's question about, for you. Let's talk about the Governor, what do you do with somebody who's making, what do you do with somebody who's making $200,000? Maybe it's a teacher at the top, or maybe it's an ACI correctional officer with overtime so what, let's, and his wife. They're making two hundred. What do you do for let's them, Let's talk about what we've done. Go ahead. $260 million, $265 million of tax relief in the budget I just passed. $75 million of tax relief for people who own cars. They're not paying any more taxes on their cars as a result of the work that I've done. Uh, Let's talk about what that means. Let's talk about what that means to not only the people who cars in the driveway or in, the, or in their garages, but let's talk about what that means to the small businesses. We have a competitive advantage because I managed the surplus and applied that surplus with the General Assembly to eliminate the car tax. Let's talk about checks that have gone out. Let's talk Hold about on. the checks. Let's talk about the checks. Let's, Gene, could I answer the question? Yes, I, let's, let's talk about the checks that went to families. Uh, uh, $250 per child, over $40 million that came from our surplus that I managed that went directly to the people in the state of Rhode Island. Nobody's talking about it because 115,000 checks went out and they all have them. So if, if it blew up in some way and we weren't able to manage it, mm -hmm. then, then it would be all over the news. Okay. That went to 115,000 people. What about the fact that we ended the, the pension, uh, the taxes on a military pension First time it's been trying for 35 years. I got it done in my, in my okay. second budget. All right. Let's talk about expanding the tax break. Governor, break. I can't. Let's we, talk we, about the expanding the tax can't fill the bus break there. for seniors who live in their homes. Let's talk about the, the, the uh, work that I did as a mayor where no, no senior okay. in, my, in my community uh, has to leave a house because of tax increases because they can defer those taxes. And we have hundreds right. of people in the town of Cumberland. Well, Governor, I got it. I got it. Okay. Or, uh, you got the first about, bell. Let's talk okay. about the, uh, the hundred million dollars right. of money that it went into the uh, that a surplus right. that went into governor, the unemployment you, you fund. You can't that fill the bus for us. You yeah. can't fill the bus for us, governor. You got to let her get back in. Dollars, so. Ashley, let, let me let me move to let, another let yeah. me move well, to another well, hold topic. Hold on. Let's talk about somebody who takes credit for other people's work. I mean. <laughs> Are you and, and hold on, and you just pushed it forward. So you took credit for the work that was done years ago. The it was pushed that you forward. Pushed it forward is that you managed let the her, largest let her, surplus. Governor, the other thing that you're taking let credit. We Are you, you talking about Speaker Mattiello passing yeah. the pensions and also passing the car tax? No, hold on. The other thing that I'm talking about. Let's. I'm saying let's talk about credit that is not due. He hands out money and does not ask for results. With me as governor, you will find somebody who looks for results. And I will say that I am all over Rhode Island talking to people and they are suffering. So while there is relief, there's not enough relief. There hasn't been relief. Families are making decisions about heating or eating or whether their children can participate in sports. There are difficult decisions that are being made. So while the governor talks about money from the federal government that will be gone as we go into recession, what he doesn't talk about is an economic policy plan to protect the future of Rhode Island. And so what I will say is this governor that is under FBI investigation for handing out contracts, what you will get, hold on, what you will get from me, it, but it, it goes together with a plan because he will do any Anything. He will do anything for special interests. When we talk about what happens in a recession, we need to ensure that public money is spent for public goods, especially in a recession. That is what happened after World War II, those mm -hmm. investments. And we should have workers building things with their hands for our children's future, not for private developers. When I'm governor, I will ensure that that happens. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh.
Candidate Kalis, you've gone after the governor because you say he can employ emergency actions to put the brakes on the doubling of the electricity rates. And he has said you're completely un in an uninformed in that. He says you're wrong. Outline your idea for us again. You sure. say he has the power to stop these rates? Yeah, so 40 years ago, the General Assembly passed a law that had to do with uh, supply disruptions for electricity. And what that law said is if there was a supply disruption that threatened the health and we welfare of Rhode Islanders, the governor could exercise emergency powers. That was uh, designed for a situation just like this. I can't think of another time in which the health and welfare of Rhode Islanders for electricity, it, it meets the criteria. And what happened is a private company came into Rhode Island, bought uh, the electricity company, and then jacked up the rates, 47%. And that hurts seniors, that hurts working families, and we can roll back the rates. It's in the law. I provided him with a 140-page uh, document, okay. and it's on my, it's on my uh, website right. as well, that he it's, can use. And what okay. I would say is, I will give you credit if you give relief to the people of Rhode Island. I will write a press release tomorrow saying, thank you so okay. much, Governor, for showing leadership. Okay. Well, uh, the the new energy company came in uh, and saying we are only passing along the increase we're paying for electricity. It's a, we're not making profit. We're passing along. The Public Utilities Commission has a, allowed that. Governor, pick it up. Yeah, it's 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 troubling how ill-informed Ms. Kalis is on this issue. <laughs> it, so it's a half-baked idea. It's ill-conceived, and it's ill-advised. How her plan? doesn't save a ratepayer penny. It just defers that out in the distance. And also it opens up the state to millions of dollars of litigation. It do, oh, the taxpayer's at risk. The plan that we put in is real. We've got over $5 million that we've already put in to help offset the cost for the 39,000 lowest income in the state of Rhode Island. We approach also, I, I have intervened with the PUC more times than any elected official has, in the, I believe, in the history of the state of Rhode Island. And I was there again this year on that rate increase. And we asked them to put $32 million of funds in across the board to every rate payer in the state of Rhode Island. In addition to that, we asked them to uh, defer the, um, the electric bill charge uh, for six months. That's going to save them more money. And in the spring, I asked the General Assembly to eliminate 4% on the, on, the, on the tax that's on the, on, the, on the bill. We're going to go back in January and get that done. And in addition to that, we're going to put money in on to expand the LIHEAP program so it expands it to people not just at 250% of the, on the poverty level, but up to 400%. These are real plans. This is what we're really doing. Ms. Kalis's plan will not save a ratepayer a penny in the state of Rhode Island. This plan is actually putting about $60 okay. million dollars of rate relief in the motion that they're going to have impact immediately. She so, had Bob Flanders. Yeah, hold on. Uh, she had yeah. Bob Flanders, yeah. the former Supreme Court justice, say this can be done. Well, have your lawyer or your lawyers, they've told you not to do it, it can't be done? Uh, they nutshell this. What if your lawyers told you? It is not an appropriate use of that statute. It's going to open up the state to millions of dollars of tax penalty, you know, tax litigation. Okay. You don't need that. What we're doing is we're putting real money on the table right now. And I want to repeat this again. Ms. Kalis's plan will not save the ratepayers in the state of Rhode Island one penny. She is deferring the expense okay. out across 12 months. So over the next 12 months, okay. Her plan will not save the ratepayers one penny. We're putting over 60 mil, close to $60 million of rate relief in. That's real a record, okay. and that's real work, I, and it's not being acknowledged right. at all. Yeah. We're, uh, on this issue, on this issue, we're at loggerheads. You well, say one I mean, thing, it's just, he, he says another. Well, but he doesn't have any substance behind his answers. I can, I can actually tell you, hold on, you say, <laughs> saying that it's ill Well, he has the state's lawyers. Hold on, well, but he doesn't explain why they, they came up with that idea. I walked through the entire process, and when he said it wasn't something that he believed in, I, I brought a Supreme Court justice to help him yeah. through it. So the reality is saying that um, the lawyer said so, and then you ask why, and you don't get an answer, it doesn't make it true. Okay. Well, being a, governor, say, being a governor is making decisions that don't put the taxpayers at risk. This well, would put the taxpayers on, at risk. And I'm going to well, repeat again. Ms. Kalis's plan is going to spread out that, that is, cost is be, over 12 months. I'm sorry, months. he just keeps on. The, being a governor is someone who doesn't will, put the people at risk. You are putting seniors at risk. They are choosing between heating and eating. And the reality is, you pretending, you that, pretending that you again, care about lawsuits. He's
he's pretending you know, he cares about lawsuits while he's appealing the truck tolling decision. What does that have to do with anything? Come on. Okay. I am worried. Okay, I now, worried now the me. audience just got the bell, all right? So I appreciate your fervor and your enthusiasm, but you know what we said. Let's, be, let's just be reasonable and let them finish the questions. You brought up truck tolls. Let's go to truck tolls. Governor, you're fighting the truck tolls. I want to press you for an answer. You've spoken to the state's lawyers. Why have they told you to fight this and you have a fighting chance of winning? Tell me. Well, first of all, you're not going to give the, uh, your defense on live TV, Gene. What I'm going to do is I'm taking what? the advice. There's no secrets among Rhode Islanders. Uh, <laughs> well, no, when, you're in a, when you're actually in a court case, you're yeah. going to going to make sure that uh, uh, nutshell it governor they said you got a chance you don't have a chance what's what's the genesis we have a right to that yeah so what we're doing right now on that issue we're appealing it as i've said on the record right on what basis on the basis that it was in place and it and it and it, the fact of the matter is that it was appropriate at the time we have a court that said it's not at the at this point in time you go to the next court and you get an appeal judicial yeah, error and, and what, did but, judge smith make a mistake you appeal on judicial error well that's what is your lawyer told time you? time will tell on that gene right well, what i'm going to say right now is you, we're not going we're not going to lay out uh, the legal case that we're going to pro provide in public that that is that, you know that is uh, you know okay that is uh, you, so you can't do that. Yeah. But I also yeah. say I want to talk about quickly on why that program is important. All right, we are Roadworks well, is a tremendous important uh, project in the state of I mean, Right now we had 27 percent of our bridges that were not in, in disrepair. Today 17, in three years will be 10 percent. We're putting 90 million dollars into roads. We're ri driving them uh, clean roads, all you know, good roads. Governor, all over I the do ask right the right DOT now. once so, a week. So the, I know. So the, I've got to get so Ashley back So the road back is a very important program. Is, and we're going to keep it going. you the answer. He doesn't want to give you a strategy unless the other side take advantage of that. He thinks he can win. The lawyers told him, you say what? What? He's not going to do it? What? Being a governor is being a person that can communicate why you are going to appeal a law that is, was found to be unconstitutional. That is very important. I have never gotten advice from my lawyer, especially about a matter that is this big and said, didn't ask on what basis. And he's had three debates to prepare for the answer. It's not strategy. It's a matter of uh, an unconstitutional law, which there was warning about in the first place, but he spent $8 million on a politically connected law firm in order to fight a unconstitutional law, and he lost. When I'm governor, I will take down the gantries, and I will not toll trucks and cars. Let me... Make, make no mistake about it. The governor intends to toll trucks and cars. That is what will happen. And, and, and you're saying that based on what? Based on, well, we could, based on, honestly, his lack of understanding of why he's appealing it. Hold on. Because the reality is this is just a revenue play. And if he will do this for revenue without even knowing the basis to which he's uh, appealing a law that is unconstitutional, that hurts businesses, why wouldn't he you know, extend tolls to cars eventually? Well, we cannot trust him to give an answer. And politicians in the past have done the same thing. Governor Leach promised there wouldn't be a, uh, a toll, uh, an income tax. And then as soon as he was elected, that was one of the first things that he did. You cannot trust him to do what he, say he says he's going to do. A That's as simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, I apart, from, uh, apart from you're not trusting him, do you have any basis to believe he would toll trucks? Yeah. On the basis of the fact that you have the, he, is, there, is this involved in the legal decision? Do you believe that if we told cars, then trucks would be allowed? What is your thinking on that? Where are you getting think, this from? My thinking is if you leave the gantries up, eventually trucks and cars will be told. When you have somebody who does not, that, but that is the that is the fact. That is what happens when you have a spending problem, not a revenue problem, which yeah. is what we have in this state. So mark my word, when I am governor, you won't have to worry about that okay. because the gantries will be down. Governor, Gee, first of all, raise your hand. You're never going to uh, toll trucks. I am not going to toll, toll cars. Or cars. And I've said that. But I can understand the distrust. I can understand the distrust with the Supreme Court decision this year that took, that it took away the Roe versus Wade. I can understand that because that's in the Republican Party. So the distrust is there with, with the Supreme Court. And the women's right to choose issue is at, is at risk as well as uh, the issues that have to do with 
uh, gun safety, as well as uh, the issues that have to do with uh, marriage equality and all those type of things. That Supreme Court, where they testified under oath, by the way, they raised their right, right hand and said that was going to be the law of the land, and then they changed it once they got there. So, but if, well, wait, if you put your hand up and say, never car tolls, I'd believe you. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Hand up, never car tolls. I already did that, and I've already he's stated that. And by the way, uh, catch me, uh, you know, look, there's been a big attempt to try to find me in something saying that something's not true. It hasn't happened yet because what I say here, I say other places. What I say here, I say uh, to people who are, who are not okay. and even, don't even like the idea of the tolls. I'm going to tell people exactly what we're doing. We're not going to be taxing cars in the state of Rhode Island, period. But, okay. but, candidates, but, candidates. Not going to be I mean, cars and but, but, candidates, we have just about yeah. seven minutes okay. left. We need to be mindful of our time. Sure. We want to allow each of you to have your one-minute closing statement. Candidate Kalis, you can respond, and then we're moving on to the next question. What I would say is that you cannot trust what he's saying, especially if he had a reason, if he had a reason, he, this is a governor who says he, he'll raise his hand. He's supposed to protect the Constitution here. But when he's asked on what basis he's going to appeal an unconstitutional decision, he leaves it up to the lawyers. That is not leadership. And so somebody who cannot, who cannot lead and make difficult okay. decisions what, is not fit saying, to be governor. Uh, if you're your own attorney, you've got a fool for an attorney. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Right. Okay. But, All right. Uh, uh, we are moving on. We have five minutes till close, and we want to hit a bunch of topics. Let's keep our answers brief. Uh, Governor, you support safe injection sites. This is where a drug abuser would be able to go into a storefront uh, and inject up under supervision so that they wouldn't overdose or put themselves in danger of death. Do you support that, candidate Kayla, safe injection sites? I've worked in um, health care for my entire career, and uh, really pause when I think of how to keep that environment of care safe. Uh, the individual would be putting themselves at risk, the health care providers around them. I, I don't know uh, how you would handle that. So my instinct is to focus more on preventing and treating substance abuse and treating it like a health care problem rather than a character problem. I think that that is important because it is a medical problem. Right. But I would not want to put health care providers or others at risk in an environment that is generally um, more controlled, but not as controlled. Okay, Governor, uh, you are behind this as an experiment. Two years, correct? I am, and and and, and yesterday we, uh, you know, certainly expanded the the overdose um, uh, task force with a with a, a full time person, and also uh, a, a citizen that's a co a co chair of that committee. Uh, we are. I, I have um, led the charge with the mayors when I was lieutenant governor. Uh, to realize millions of dollars into the state of Rhode Island, holding the distributors and the manufacturers accountable. Those dollars are going to help us uh, deal with this issue, and we need, we need to be uh, front on and do, take every possible um, measure that we can, okay. and that's one of the measures that I believe let's, will be helpful. Let's move on to regionalization, 39 towns, different police departments and fire departments. Governor, what's been done on your watch toward regionalization? Uh, Maya Lombardi, a fan of yours, mm -hmm. says regionalization is the savior for Rhode Island. What have you done toward that, quickly? Yeah, so I, I believe that uh, regionalization where it makes sense, makes sense. Uh, you know, we are working with the municipalities on animal shelters, on public safety dispatch. I'm a av big advocate for that and supporting what's happening in North Providence. I think that regionalizing our public safety dispatch makes all the sense in the world. We've seen that. I, bit, I visited sites in Massachusetts to do that. So where it makes sense, let's do it. But also let's make sure that we re understand we're realizing a savings and we're just not doing it just for the benefit of, of a regionalization. Candidate Kalis, regionalization, yeah, 39 this, different towns. Yeah, in this matter we agree. I think where it makes sense. That's the first one tonight. Oh, well, yeah, go it's ahead. good. <laughs> you, um, I think that if it can save money and still we can still provide adequate services, I think we should look into it. And I think that having someone like myself that'll sit down with cities and towns and ask ways in which we can regionalize in a way that is open to suggestions is important. How about consolidating departments? For example, the DOT directors, uh, uh, Dr. Raimondo thought, well, perhaps uh, DOT could take over the bridge authority or the airport, or there's room for consolidation, sort of like a port authority. Uh, what would you think about that, consolidation under DOT, yeah. different departments? When I'm governor, uh, you'll get the same desire to maintain services while uh, gaining efficiency. So I would be open to consolidation as long as it doesn't hurt the services that are delivered. 
Right now, uh, the governor has an issue delivering services. Being the governor of Rhode Island um, is not like being the governor of California. 80% of the job is being a competent administrator. And what you see with Dan McKee is a governor that does not have the departments working well. I'm hearing from so many people that are waiting on the phones for hours to try to get through to DHS. Okay. And so my goal will be to right. ensure that services are delivered in an efficient manner. And if consolidation helps us get there so that people know where to, to call and we're able to do that, I would be okay with that. Governor, we have less than a minute. I yeah. have to cut you off because yeah. I get to get, get to a close. Bridge, bridge Go authority. ahead about consolidating DOT. By the way, Bridge Authority, this is another part of the record, $82 million to help on the Pell Bridge. That was announced uh, this week as well, right. just to let everybody know that we actually are doing the work and working with our congressional de delegation. We are going to create, by the way, you don't manage the largest surplus in the state of Rhode Island as I did as a, as a mayor. I got eight points recovery on our bond rating as, as a mayor of the town of Cumberland. We're managing the state of Rhode Island the same way. And then we're taking the surplus dollars and we're investing in the people of the state of Rhode Island in projects around the state of Rhode Island, whether it's in, whether it's in Galilee, whether it's in Quonset, whether it's at Superman building, whether it's in Pawtucket. These investments provide good paying jobs and that's the biggest remedy to any level of a recession it's called jobs and then after you get the projects done after you get Five, the projects after four, you get the projects done three, it'll give us economic opportunity for done. decades to come thank you done okay the bell is to signal the end of the questions we go to closing arguments by coin toss governor mckee you go first one minute yeah thanks gene and thank you to channel 10 um, and thank you to the people out in the state of Rhode Island, the people who have attended this debate tonight. My wife Susan and I grew up in our, in our hometown. Uh, we raised our kids, sent our kids to public schools. I was in public schools as well. We believe in the state of Rhode Island. As a mayor, I did the same thing. I think we talked about that a little tonight. Served the people well, and our town was in better shape after I left than when I, when I came. And measure this over the last 20 months. What we've done to take the state to make it safer on vaccinations, take the state to make it economically stronger by recovering, uh, uh, economic recovery, second in the country, taking the state in terms of opening up our schools safely, and now we're ready to tackle that issue of bringing us to levels of Massachusetts levels on or before 2030. So I ask each and every person out there to vote for Dan McKee. Vote for the progress that we've made in the last 20 months. We have had, we have had we have momentum like we've never seen before, and we have just getting started. Governor, thank you. <laughs> Audience, let, let us have uh, candidate Kalis's closing statement for one minute, and then we'll have a robust round of applause. One minute un uninterrupted, candidate Kalis, closer. We hear the governor talk a lot about momentum, how great our state is doing, and how we need to stay the course. I've spoken to hundreds of thousands of Rhode Islanders and I hear the same consistent theme. It is unaffordable to live here. Families are being crushed, seniors are being forgotten, low income Rhode Islanders are being told to wait for relief. We need new leadership. I am uniquely qualified for this job. I am a successful businesswoman who gets results. This election is bigger than any one person or party. It's about a vision for Rhode Island, leaving Rhode Island stronger for the next generation. If you are satisfied with your child's education, the economy, roads and bridges, tolls, high utility rates, and you don't mind FBI investigations, then you have your guy in Dan McKee. But if you believe that we are on the wrong track and you want a world-class education, a booming economy, high paying careers, affordable housing, safe streets and safe schools, now is the time for new leadership. My name is Ashley Kalis, and I humbly ask for your vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, audience. Thank you, audience, and thank you, candidates. Governor McKee, thank you. Good luck to you. Candidate Kalish, good luck to you. Thanks thank to you. both of you for coming in. Vote. This is your last chance to see them face off before the election next week. Thanks for joining us.